Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. This week I received a roll of polylite filament in the mail from Polymaker, and they asked that I do a review of it, spend some time with it, and give you my opinions. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so the roll of filament that I received from Polymaker is their true black filament in a 1.75 millimeter diameter. It is a PLA, and as of right now, it's only available in the U.S. It is a lower cost PLA from Polymaker. I don't want to put a price on it because it may change by the time you watch this, but I did put an affiliate link down below if you'd like to take a look. It is available right now only on Amazon. Now, before we take a look at prints from this guy, let's unbox the roll together so that you can see how it is packaged up. I do want to mention one thing that I do like on the side of the box here is in addition to telling you what the filament is, they also include a batch number. So that kind of serves two purposes for you. One is if you ever need to do a color match, if you can find another spool of the same batch it is more likely going to be the same color uh, for a multi-part or a large print where you, you span one spool. Secondly is if you ever have any problems with the filament and you need to report back to Polymaker, that batch number is definitely something that is useful information to them. So let's take a look inside. Inside you just have a little sheet of paper here, and I'll set this outside of the way. The, the sheet tells you the basic specifications. It is, and I'll show you a close-up of this. Um, it tells you the, the color and a little bit more about the Polylite PLA. It tells you recommended printing speed, average filament diameter, and specs. They claim this to be accurate to plus or minus 0 0.02 millimeters typically which is fairly reasonable. Um, and of course they recommend the printing temperatures of 195 to 230 range for 1.75 filament or 210 to 230 for the 2.85 millimeter filament. And they suggest a heated build plate but it is not required. Now the filament itself is sealed up vacuum tight very nicely and while it's not a mylar bag it is a resealable bag. So let's rip this open and see how it looks inside. Ah, fresh PLA. I can tell right now the spool is very nice. It is clear and it is very rigid. Um, that same information that was on the outside of the box is also on the spool here on the tab, including the batch number. And I really like this actual physical spool. Of course, it has the, de de blah, 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 the desiccant in it to keep it dry. Um, one thing I notice is that the filament looks to have a little bit of texture to it, a little bit of ribbing to it. That's not necessarily going to hurt your nozzle or anything. Um, it's just a note on the filament itself. It's not like it's abrasive from that texture. It just means that it's not a glossy smooth like some of the other ones. Um, this little piece had broken off, but let's go ahead and pull around one loop. We'll tuck it through the side. We'll tuck it through the hole again to create our loop. And we'll snip this off here. So we can take a look at a strand. Now it does hold its curl very nice, which means it is a stiffer filament. Um, but it doesn't necessarily, it bends nice also. It doesn't break necessarily until you've sit and bent it several times. So spool tensile strength is decent there. 
So let's pop this on some printers and I will get some prints out of it and we'll step back here in a bit and take a look at those. Okay, we're back from the printers and we have all of this. And as you can see, I've burned through quite a bit of the spool of this Polylite PLA. Now, this stack on my left here was done on the CME CNC H2 without using the heat bed, just hairspray on glass. This stack on the right was done on the Monoprice Maker Select, aka the Wanhao Duplicator I3 or the DI3. And that was done using the heated bed and Magigoo as an enhancer. Um, so let's talk about both, both piles. Now, as you can see on this side, I did several prints um, on the H2 and I ended up having to stop after this because I experienced a nozzle jam and uh, unfortunately I broke the heat block while trying to clear that. Um, I started off by doing a couple of these plates. It's just a generic plate with a couple of holes through it. I, I wanted to get an idea of how much infill I needed, how many top and bottom layers, and as you can see it separates and it's very fragile. It breaks up like that. Um, that was because of the printer settings that I was using and by these simple plates like this it allows me to, like this one here as well, it allows me to kind of get a feel for where I need to adjust the temperature and where I need to make adjustments in extrusion to be able to get some decent prints. So I moved from there over to the Benchy here and the Benchy came out okay. There's a lot of stringing um, and I left that on there so that you could see it, but there is a lot of stringing and that's not surprising on the CME CNC H2 because of the type of cooling that they use for the part cooling um, and it's a delta with the, the retraction there. So I, I have gotten better prints with less stringing on that, um, but you know without further fine-tuning the settings that's it's not bad. It did complete it, all the overhangs and all of the bridging and I mean it's all in all it's a not a pretty benchy but it's acceptable. I moved from there on to the Flowalistic Low Poly Pug. Uh, as you can see there was a, a little little bit of a, a layer shift here around here at the neck and again that was the printer but the settings were a lot better this time. I still had some stringing um, again because of the way the retraction is handled on that and trying to dial in the retraction settings. Um, but the layers were okay. This was done at a 0.3 layer height, so it was just a really quick test print um, to see how that goes. And then I scaled it back down to a 0.2 and I did filament. Now, again, tiny bit of stringing around the feet, but nothing else anywhere else, and it completed everything else with the, the details required. The important part to me here to see is that the top, actually, where the, the top or the ball of the cone comes together, came out smooth and the back here where the backpack is came out smooth. The last thing that I did on the H2 before it jammed up was I printed this pair of Jolbots. I printed them as a pair and again I mentioned that the, the stringing issue with the H2 because of the cooling on there and the two legs what I did was I printed two of them back to back like this so it actually created a hairy Jol in the, in the uh, process. Um, I, I don't think the real Joel has that quite that hairy of a back, at least I would hope not. Um, and, and again, it came out, it came out okay. So my, my experience with the Polylite on the H2 was it was not anything stellar. It, it was an average black filament, um, average for its price point, N nothing, nothing stellar, nothing that stood out you know, as extraordinary. Um, it, it printed okay. It did take a little bit of time to dial it in compared to some other PLA filaments that just my typical settings would work with. I had to play with the retraction a bit to try to minimize that stringing and play with the, the cooling. Now fast forward over here to the, the DI3. Now the DI3, because I have the Micro Swiss nozzle, I've got to run that typically about 10 to 15 degrees hotter um, for PLA because of the temperature variations and, and that the doesn't conduct heat as well as a typical brass nozzle does. 
So factoring that in, I, I ran a plethora of, of stuff here. Um, again, I ran a plate. Uh, it's a little different plate than this one here, but um, just to get an idea of, of my, my, my fill settings to make sure that I was not over or under extruding um, and, and to see how it laid down. And that came out okay. Um, again, nothing stellar, but it was okay. I ran, on, ran that to the, uh, the benchy and a little bit of stringing on the overhang inside the, um, the pilot house here, for lack of better words. But all in all, it's, it's not a bad benchy. Um, it's not as pristine as some of the others that we've seen out there. But it, it completed, and again, it's what I kind of expect at the price point of the filament. I moved on to some other models that I wanted to see. Uh, one of them was the Oddish by CMC, um, I'm sorry, by CMC and C. One of them was Oddish by Chaos Cortec. And what I wanted to test here was the way that these curve up, but I also wanted to test the, the brittleness and the strength of it and how the layers separate. As you can see, the infill was a little bit lower and this is a little bit more brittle so that it actually breaks apart and separates very easy on that. I ran through and I did the octopus here and it actually came out stellar. This was done at a 0.2 layer height and it came out r looking really good. I then moved on to my soup tin Kelly and I did this at a 0.3 layer height and as you can see it it's the gloss is there uh, but there's a little bit of loss of detail or layer height almost like it's over extruded using the same settings as the other models. Um, on the top here. So I went ahead and ran a little bit of cleaning filament um, through the printer at this point just to make sure nothing was baking in there and causing that over extrusion or that, that push at the end there. Um, and without changing the settings I went ahead and printed the, uh, the Pegasus Unicorn here which came out great. And again this was back down at a 0.2 layer height. Um, the detail is all of there around the mouth and the eyes, everything looks good. Filament does have a little bit of a shine to it. It's not a matte filament, that is for sure. Then I ran the pearl tower test, and again, a little bit of stringing. Um, I think some, a little bit more time dialing in the retraction settings on this filament definitely would help. And then, of course, I did fill again on a uh, on the DI3 and I wanted to see at the same layer height the 0.2 and I just wanted to be able to see the difference between the two and again the top came out looking stellar there but I did lose a little bit under the backpack here um, and, and on the, the lower sides and I think the temperature may have just been a little bit too low as it was extruding there the, the last two prints that I ran, of course, I ran a spiral vase just to see how well it held together. And this actually does hold water, and in the spiral vase heart came out great. And I printed the new alpaca model that is showing on Thingiverse right now. Um, I'll have a link to all of these models uh, down below in the description. Um, this prints flat on the bed like this, and the legs are a print and price place articulating model. So once it's done, you fold it down. Now I had a little bit of artifacting under the chin here, and it was a little bit rough. I printed this at a 0.3 layer height, and it did show that it was very rough and very fast. But it did do the separation, and the tail did stay intact. So to summarize everything and let you know my opinion of the Polylite PLA, uh, specifically the black here because I haven't tested the other colors but specifically the black is it is an average filament for the price it's in line with uh, price wise with Hatchbox and some other filaments in that price range it's available right now only in the USA and it's available through Amazon.com I'll have a link to it down below in the description if you want to pick some up and give it a try it's, it's not a bad filament, but it is definitely not something that competes with a higher end filament that's at a higher price point. 
I will say with the other colors, again, I mentioned I haven't tried the other colors, but the other colors, the whites and the grays, I'm seeing a lot of really strong reviews on those that people are doing some really great prints with those. So I definitely highly recommend giving a roll um, of those a chance. And, and again, the black, if you feel like something, um, giving it a shot. So that's about it. I'll end it there. Um, I hope you've like the sampling of prints, we tried to put it through. I tried to um, kind of grab what's hot on Thingiverse, but you know, different but similar styles, things that show different traits of, of the print. Um, you know, from my block test that I do, um, you know, to the definitely the more detailed models. I, I will give the filament props that it was able to pull off doing a Joel bot on an H2 that doesn't have the best cooling in the world, part cooling in the world, although it did create the hairy Joel. So with that, I'll leave you. Aloha.